This week on The Wire, Aussies bullish on house prices. Sydney and Melbourne to bottom out in March and first home buyers reach a six year high. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director and founder of Infinite Wealth. We're bringing you all the up to date news stories to keep you on point and your finger on the pulse when it comes to real estate in Australia. Now whether you're a first time follower uh, welcome along if you've been following us for a long time. Thanks for coming back. We love to see your interaction with these videos. So please like, love, angries. And of course, we wanna see your comments and questions as well. Uh, and of course, we'd love it if you'd please share uh, this video on your social media channels uh, so that we can continue to add a dish, a great value to uh, the people that follow us. Uh, and it keeps me motivated to keep doing these videos. So first, let's cut to the top story. Aussies are still bullish on house prices. So despite headlines about falling house prices in Sydney and Melbourne, a new survey shows that Australians remain optimistic about property prices. So this was a survey that was done by 2,100 people by the comparison site CanStar. And the survey found that uh, still 5% of Australians expect house prices to skyrocket with a third of people surveyed expecting steady, steady growth and around 25% of the people surveyed expected uh, the market to remain stable. Now, per, people were most optimistic in Brisbane where house prices have been broadly steady, but of course there's significant improvements in the economy uh, in, the Queensland, uh, in, in the state of Queensland. Uh, we've also, about 50% of those people surveyed expect prices to rise. However, a third of the survey respondents in Sydney and Melbourne uh, also expect price growth. So that's pretty surprising for a market where we've seen some quite um, heavy declines, or in, certainly in a short term, and there's been a lot of obviously negative news media around that as well. Now, the findings also come after the NAB survey of more than 2,000 customers last week. Uh, so that in Sydney and Melbourne, they found 5% expect prices to rise at least 10% the next year, 25%, not that uh, quite that much growth, but still price growth, which leads me into the second story, which is Sydney and Melbourne expected to bottle out, bottom out in March. So this comes um, from the Ray White chairman, uh, Brian White. So Sydney and Melbourne housing markets will hit the bottom by the second quarter of this year. Now there's been a healthy adjustment after the boom market, uh, that's what White says, and there's now evidence of more people attending more home opens and auctions as potential buyers assess the state of the market. Now his expectation is that by the end of March, it will be the bottom of the market, but of course keep in mind that no one ever gets it exactly right. But what he's, uh, he's basing that on is the activity that's uh, it's currently happening out there in the market, and he is, expects more good evidence over the coming months. Um, more people are at auctions, not necessarily to buy, but certainly to gauge what's happening, which has always been an important indicator of the market. So his recent sales activity shows us that the buyers are now making acquisitions and expressing their views that they don't wanna miss the bottom of the market. So housing values in Sydney, keep in mind that if we look at just the last five years, uh, house prices in Sydney rose 75%. Uh, in the five years to July 2017, and Melbourne's housing prices rose by 58% over that same five year period, according to CoreLogic. Uh, measures of Melbourne price movements from various research sources in the past 12 months range from a rise of 1.4% through to a decline of two to 9%. For Sydney, different research entity reports uh, declines ranging from five to 10%. So keep that in mind when you're getting reports from the Real Estate Institute's RP Data, SQM, uh, what you'll always find is their results are always different. So Daniel's asking, is it a good time to buy late in the year? Mate, I would say that that depends on the market that you're looking at. If you're looking at places like Adelaide, Perth, and Brisbane, I think you wanna be moving now. Uh, Sydney and Melbourne, probably towards the end of the year, I think that'd certainly be a great time. So great question. Thanks a lot for the question as well, Daniel. Um, now moving on to the final story today, I also want to talk about first home buyers, which I think um, is a great story to talk about. I mean, obviously, a Labor have been jumping up and down about removing negative gearing, which, you know, as a tax principle, makes no sense whatsoever. Um, but the reason why they've been talking about it is about housing affordability. But one of the things that we've been seeing is that while they've been talking about how impossible it is for people to get into the market, what we're seeing is the actual first home buyer activity is the highest that it's been in a number of years. So currently, it's reached a six-year high. So in November, this is the stats from November, Remember, 10,500 first home buyers took out a home loan in November, and that's just off the highest number in nine years. So this is the highest activity of first home buyers in nine years, or almost, or almost the highest activity in nine years. And this is according to Comsec Chief Economist Craig James. 
The proportion of first home buyers in the home loan market rose to 18.3%, which is the highest level in six years as well. Clearly these buyers, he says, are celebrating the greater choice of properties on the market, more attractive prices and super low interest rates. Uh, James said, too much focus is placed on Sydney and Melbourne when housing markets in other parts of the country is doing well. It's a very good point. One of the things I've been talking about a lot, we get a lot of this. Keep in mind the media is primarily located in Sydney and maybe some in Melbourne as well. If their markets aren't doing well, they seem to talk about the Australian housing market. There is no such thing as the Australian housing market. In fact, there are 14 major property markets in Australia. They're all at different times of their cycles and Sydney and Melbourne are well and truly due for their, due for their downturn while a lot of the, most of those other markets are actually due, uh, due for their recoveries and the strong uh, growth sections of their market. Um, now, just finishing off that, over the year to November, almost $238 billion in loans were taken up by homeowners, uh, by owner occupiers, which is just below the all time high of $240 billion in the year to August. So guys, that's it for me. That's uh, the week in real estate uh, for January the 31st, Thursday the January 31st. I hope that was valuable to you guys. Like I said, guys, love your interaction. Thanks for the question, Daniel. Please share this. It, uh, you know, it just it keeps me going, guys. That's why I do this, all right? Thanks a lot. Have a great day and enjoy your weekend if I don't speak to you before.